السيدات والسادة الحضور ضيوفنا الأفاضل محدثينا الموقرين حضورنا الكريم نصبح عليكم بالخير وحياكم الله معنا اليوم في المؤتمر الكويت الهندي لتكنولوجيا المعلومات سنة 2023 Ladies and gentlemen Distinguished guests Steamed speakers Valued attendees Good morning everyone and welcome to the India Kuwait Information Technology Conference 2023 في البداية نرحب بطبعا سعادة سفير جمهورية الهند لدولة الكويت ونرحب أيضا بضيوف الكويت في أرض الصداقة والسلام ونرحب أيضا بأصحاب السعادة الممثلين من القطاع الحكومي والقطاع الخاص ولكم أيضا حضورنا الكريم ونأمل من هذا المؤتمر أن يفيد الجميع First of all, I would like to greet His Excellency the Ambassador of Republic of India to the State of Kuwait and also warm welcome to the Kuwaiti guest in the land of friendship and peace and also warm welcome to the Excellencies the representative representatives from public and private sectors and for all of you dear audience because we hope this conference is rewarding and beneficial for everyone حضون الكريم يسأل نلتقي معكم اليوم في مؤتمر الكويت الهندي لتكنولوجيا المعلومات سنة 2023 ونجتمع معكم اليوم لنا معرفة آخر التطورات وما يخص موضوع تكنولوجيا المعلومات وأيضا تبادل الخبرات مع المختصين في هذا المجال Dear audience, we convey today to engage to know more about the latest technology and development of IT and also to share the experiences from the expert of this field ونشيد بالذكر أيضا ضيوفنا الأكارم أن هذا المؤتمر ينظم سفارة جمهورية الهند لدولة الكويت بالشراكة مع مجلس الأعمال المهنيين الهندي ورابط الوطني للبرمجيات والخدمات الهندي بالإضافة بدعم من غرفة التجارة والصناعة الكويت Dear audience, it's worth mentioning that this conference organized by the, 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 by the Embassy of India to the State of Kuwait and also partnership with India Businesses and Professional Council, IBPC, and National Association Software and Services, NASCOM, with support of Kuwait's Chamber of Commerce and Industry. هذه كانت نبضة مختصرة لكم ضيوفنا الأكارم. That was a brief description about the Coms, dear audience. بس عندي لكم شغلة ثانية حضون الكريم. بين جدول المح بين جدول المؤتمر راح يكون عندنا أسئلة. راح يكون عندنا جوائز قيمة للحضور الكريم. وبين الأسئلة وبين الجدوى راح أكون ماخذ جولة في هذا المكان راح نسأل أسئلة الحضور الكريم إذا جاونا إجابات صحيحة لنا جاءوا جوائز قيمة مقدمة من سفارة جمهورية الهند and also before we're gonna start dear audience between the schedule of the conference we have pop quizzes we're gonna ask the audience and the person who already answered correctly he have a great prize from the embassy of India we're gonna give it to him at the end of this conference هذه كانت نبذة مختصرة والآن حضورنا الكريم نترككم الآن مع هذا الفيديو and I'm going to leave you with the video of NASCOM and India PDI story by NASCOM. Please uh, stay tuned and stay tuned with us from this video.
नमस्कार लेट मी टॉक अबाउट हाउ इंडिया हैज ट्रांसफॉर्म द वे वी मेक पेमेंट्स नाउ आई एम श्योर यू मस्ट बी फेमिलियर विद द कन्वेंशनल वेज ऑफ गोइंग टू अ बैंक स्टैंडिंग इन द क्यूज एंड गेटिंग कैश फॉर आवर एवरी डे एक्सपेंसिस राइट नाउ इमेजिन बींग एबल टू रिसीव एंड सेंड मनी इंस्टेंटली विद इन सेकेंड्स विदाउट द यूज ऑफ कैश और क्रेडिट कार्ड साउंड इंटरेस्टिंग राइट Now to make that happen the government of India in 2016 introduced UPI the fastest payment method wherein with just a few taps on your phone you are able to do these easiest transactions and the accessibility is so convenient that everyone in India every nook and corner of India is able to access this and able to use it making it cross 8 billion plus monthly transactions in the year 2023 To make that happen the government of India introduced the fastest payment method UPI unified payment interface which has made the magic of faster payments possible let's see how while you have already experienced the power of fast payments in UPI let me demonstrate the magic that happens behind the screen while the user only experiences the lightning fast payment there's a network of players such as pay bank receiver bank npci server and other bank servers in the backend Once the QR code is scanned, watch the screen as I press pay. A real-time secure communication channel ensures and establishes link with many networks involved in the process. And all of this happens within few seconds. Once done, the receiver gets an audio text confirmation of receiving the payment and that's the end of process. كل الشكر لجميع القائمين على هذا الفيديو سبيشال ثانكس فور ذا بيبل هو اوريدي ديد ذس فيديو ونستكمل معاكم حضورنا الكريم برنامج هذا المؤتمر نو ال جانا كونتينيوينغ ذا سكيدجول اوف ذا اوبننج سيرموني اوف ذا كونفرنس مع كلمه سعاده سفير جمهوريه الهند لدوله الكويت نو ال جانا هير ذا سبيتش اوف ذا اكسلنسي ذا امباسادور اوف انديا تو ذا ستيت اوف كويت دكتور ادر سويكا بليز بوسي تو ذا ستيج جود مورنينج مس وفاء القطامي بورد ممبر كي سي سي اي Mr. Omar Al-Omar, Chairman Sitra, Mr. Isham Al-Kishram, CEO Knet, Mr. Gurvinder Lamba, BPC Chairman, distinguished delegates from NASCOM India, distinguished speakers and panelists from Kuwait, distinguished members from various government and private sector organizations in Kuwait, friends from media, ladies and gentlemen, a very good afternoon, good morning. I welcome you all to today's India Kuwait Information Technology Conference. I thank all our partners who has worked tirelessly with the embassy over the last few months and particularly the IBPC, the Indian Business and Professional Council, the National Association of Software and Services Company of India which has sent a multi-level, multi-company high-level delegation despite the competing obligations. Our gratitude to KCCI which has always been supportive of our efforts in strengthening economic partnership between the two countries and a sincere appreciation to CAIT the Central Agency for Information Technology and Sitra not only for the presence today but also for the full support in our endeavors i also deeply appreciate the presence of distinguished representatives of various ministries and government organizations from kuwait business houses other institutions and our friends from media and last but not the least my embassy team team for the hard work in putting all this together ladies and gentlemen information technology is something that permeates every economic activity today from large businesses to small businesses to social work and even to our embassy work we all need its help to meet our requirements and this is a sector which india and indian companies are widely known globally and rightfully take pride in it is in this context that the embassy thought of organizing this event in order to bring together stakeholders from both countries face to face to explore greater collaborations between them and as you can see from the brochures which are put on the table many of these companies are known for their work in this sector both in india and abroad i am sure that our kuwaiti friends would take full advantage of their presence here today while the nascom delegates will tell you in detail about the dynamics and specifics of the information technology sector and its dynamics i would like to take this opportunity to give you a sense of information technology sector in india and its global outreach 
including in Kuwait. First, some facts and statistics. India's technology industry revenue is estimated to be US dollars 245 billion in financial year 2023, with IT exports estimated at US dollar 194 billion and expected to grow at 9.4%. It contributed to 53% of India's service exports in financial year 2023. India is the third largest and fastest growing hub for technology startups, with 23 new unicorns India became the second highest country in terms of number of unicorns added in 2022. 1,300 plus new tech startups emerged in 2022. Indian SaaS companies, software as a service, saw twice, uh, two times growth in share of global markets. India has in many years 59 number of SaaS unicorns and potential unicorns. In terms of FDI equity inflow, the sector has attracted FDI equity inflow of US dollar 93.58 billion between 2000 and 2022. I must mention here for those Kuwaiti companies that are interested in investing in India's IT sector that up to 100% FDI is allowed in data processing, software development and computer consultancy services, software supply services, business and management consultancy services, market research services, technical testing and analysis services under the automatic route. India is one of the most preferred destinations when it comes to setting up global capability centers. Total number of global capability centers today in India are 1,570 plus. Over 45 new data centers are expected to come up in India by 2025. Data centers in India have attracted investment of US dollar 10 billion since 2020. Google announced in June 2023, expansion of cloud services in India with a US dollar 1 billion investment in new data centers and opening of its global fintech operation center at Gift City in Gujarat. Amazon Web Services, announced in March 2023, plans to invest US dollar 12.7 billion into India by 2030, bringing its total investment to US dollar 16.4 billion over a period spanning almost a decade and a half. Last week, Infosys expanded its alliance with Google Cloud to help enterprises build AI-powered experiences. Infosys will create the generative AI labs to develop industry-specific AI solutions and train 20,000 employees on Google Cloud's GenAI solutions. Friends, Indian industry is consistently strengthening its digital capabilities by adopting deep tech technologies and focusing on deploying emerging technology solutions such as AI, cybersecurity, and IoT. Both central and state governments in India have taken steps towards developing technology solutions to digitally enable citizen services. With data costs of Indian rupees 10 per GB, India has one of the lowest data costs in the world. We have leveraged technology to transform governance to make it more efficient, inclusive, faster, and transparent. Our unique identity, digital identity platform, Aadhaar, covers more than 1.3 billion people. We have used the power of Jam Trinity, Jandhan Bank Accounts, Aadhaar, and Mobile to revolutionize financial inclusion in India. Every month, nearly 10 billion transactions take place on UPI, which you just saw in the video, uh, instant payment system. More than 45% of the global real-time payments happen in India. Direct transfer benefits of government support is plugging leakages and has saved over USD 33 billion. The COVID portal helped in the delivery of over 2 billion COVID vaccines along with digitally verifiable certificates. The Gati Shakti platform uses technology and spatial planning to map infrastructure and logistics. Our online public procurement platform, the government e-marketplace, has brought transparency and probity into the process. The open network for digital commerce is democratizing e-commerce. Fully digitized, digitized taxation systems are promoting transparency and e-governance. We are building Bhashini, an AI-powered language platform, sub translation platform, to support digital inclusion in all the diverse languages of India. Technology has never connected us uh, like before. It holds the promise for inclusive and sustainable development for all, all. We can include advanced financial inclusion and productivity through digital public infrastructure. 
and India's digital public infrastructure offers scalable, secure, and inclusive solutions for global challenges. A solution that succeeds in India can be easily applied anywhere in the world, including in Kuwait. And India is ready to share its experiences with the world. We have now created an online global public digital goods repository, the India Stack. Friends, uh, we are equally aware of the focus of the government of Kuwait on the information technology sector through its Vision 2035 Economic Diversification Plan and the new government plan of 2024-40, Kuwait is keen to modernize and digitize its economy and become a smart commercial hub in the region. So the presence of a large number of government and private sector entities today in this event speaks of the importance Kuwait attaches to this digital transformation objectives. And the leadership of both these countries has also identified this sector as an important area of uh, mutual interest. This is, therefore, I feel, a sector where we can consult, cooperate, and collaborate for win-win partnerships. I am fully convinced that today's conference and the B2B networking event after this will take forward our cooperation in IT and ITA sector, both between the government and the private sector. I once again thank you all for joining us for this today's event. Thank you. Special thanks to His Excellency, the Ambassador of Public of India to the State of Kuwait for his wonderful speech. And we also appreciate the bilateral diplomatic relation between the two friendly countries. كل شيء كل سعادة سفير جمهورية الهند لدولة الكويت على هذه الكلمة. فهل نعتز بالعلاقات الوثيقة بين البلدين الصديقين؟ فالعلاقات الكويتية الهندية هي علاقة وطيدة وتاريخية. والمزيد من التعاون والتأخي والتعاضد هي حقيقة. راسخة ونستكمل معكم حضورنا الكريم برنامج هذا المؤتمر ولنا جانا continue the schedule of the conference مع كلمة رئيس مجلس الأعمال والمهنيين الهندي now we're gonna hear the speech of chairman of Indian Businesses and Professional Council IBBC please welcome Mr. Govinder Lamba hi good morning dear friends uh, very very warm welcome to all of you to join us today and really appreciate the effort put in by our Indian Embassy uh, and us IBPC and uh, NASCOM to actually make a huge effort to come all the way to Kuwait and uh, thank you all. So let me start by saying that uh, we want to extend a warm welcome to um, our Ambassador of India to Kuwait, His Excellency Dr. Adash Vaika, board member of Kuwait Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Ms. Wafa Al Katami, Mr. Omar Al Omar, Chairman of uh, Citra, uh, Dr. Chetan Semant, he is the director of uh, uh, for director for SME at NASCOM, and uh, Mr. Ajay Singh, the regional director of Tata Consultancy Services. And uh, today, uh, after the presentation, we have a panel discussion. So I would like to mention that from the panel discussion, we have Mr. Mohammad Al Tura. He is the Chief of Market and Competition at Citra. Mr. Muhammad Abu Atiyah, the Director for Network and Security at the IDR United. Mr. Mark Diamond, he is the Chief Technology Officer of National Bank of Kuwait. Uh, Mr. Naveen Parthi, he is the VP of Sales at NRA of India. And Mr. Adil Hussain, Co-Founder and CEO of Techno, Technostask Business Solutions India. And of course, the moderator will be Mr. Ajay Singh from uh, TCS. Uh, so let me start again by saying that I am Gurvinder Singh Lamba, Chairman of IBPC. And I'm joined here with my team of uh, co-office bearers, Mr. Vice, Vice Chairman, Mr. Keza Shakar, uh, Secretary, Mr. Soli Matthew, Joint Secretary, Mr. K.P. Suresh, and Treasurer, Mr. Surita Arora. So IBPC operates under the patronage of the Indian uh, Embassy and the Ambassador to Kuwait. This platform provides a valuable opportunity for the Indian diaspora in Kuwait to foster both cultural and professional connections. We deeply appreciate the steadfast support and facilitation of the Indian community's growth by the leaders of Kuwait and the broader Kuwaiti community for many decades. Amid the challenging period of the COVID uh, pandemic, IBPC made significant contributions to the Amiri Diwan and the Red Crescent Society. 
aiding in humanitarian relief efforts and providing support such as food and oxygen to fellow citizens. Throughout this time, the government and the citizens of Kuwait have been very generous in their support. Looking ahead, we aspire to create even stronger collaborative ties between Kuwait and India through the IVPC platform under the umbrella of uh, the Indian Embassy. This year, the IBPC team, accompanied with 65 delegates, attended the 17th Pravasi Bharti Divas, an event hosted by the Prime Minister's office in India every year since 2003. This is a non-resident Indian forum to acknowledge the contributions of the Indian diaspora globally and to further encourage investments into India. During our participation, we had the opportunity to engage with many industrialists, and the prevailing sentiment was clear, India is on the move. India's foray into the future started with our Prime Minister, former Prime Minister. He was then the Finance Minister, Dr. Manmohan Singh, back in 91. Dr. Singh is credited with kick-starting economic reforms and putting India on track towards its development. Over the last decade, our Prime Minister, Shri Narendra Modi, and his team of experts have taken India to unprecedented heights of progress. The PM's Made in India initiative has been exec executed by nearly all the states in India, and with them providing facilities and support for the investor to invest with confidence. The decades of 1970s was very important. This was a period when computer industry blossomed in India, and the 80s was when the software development by various companies began in right earnest. And that's why you see that in 1988, NASCOM was established. Today, technology continues to evolve rapidly and permeate more layers of business operations. Digital solutions have become an integral component of growth roadmaps for all enterprises. India's leaders and entrepreneurs have very competently moved India into a digital, digitally empowered society with a knowledge-based economy. At present, India holds a strong position in terms of advanced technology India also serves as a knowledge warehouse with the existence of its qualified and trained manpower. All of this has converged to give India an opportunity to become a hub for technology and innovation as corporations look to adopt technology at a global level. India today is emerging as a key player in the global value chain with its ever-growing IT solutions and the expansion of its manufacturing sector in pharmaceutical chemical, automotive, aerospace, agriculture, and many more. This conference aligns with Kuwait Vision 2035 in driving digital transformation and adoption across all sectors. We hope that the most invaluable skill set with us today, both from NASCOM uh, representatives and the, and the Kuwaiti side, will be highly valuable to the leading authorities and companies in the field of digital transformation. Today, you will hear from the experienced professionals from Kuwait and India, as well as observe a panel discussion being moderated by Mr. Ajay Singh. I'm certain that each one of you will leave here having gained new knowledge and having been enriched by the wisdom of these remarkable leaders in their respective fields. And last but not least, please remember to take your booklets which are on your table uh, so that you can access the uh, resources that you need. Thank you so much. All the best. Thank you. Special thanks to the chairman of IBBC for his wonderful speech. حضورنا الكريم وصلنا معكم إلى السؤال الأول. هل عندنا اليوم جوائز راح نقدم لكم مثل ما قلنا لكم في بداية المقدمة. Now is the time for our first pop quiz for today, dear audience. I already mentioned to you in the beginning of all my speech that it will be like a pop quizes, and the winner will have a, a precious prize from the sponsors. حضورنا الكريم. إحنا عندنا جوائز قيمة لكم مقدمة من الرعاة اليوم. لابتوبات, آيبادات بشكل مختلف. فرح أسأل سؤال باللغة العربية واللغة الإنجليزية ليرفع إيده إلى أنا على طول ولا أنا أخذ عشوائي I will go randomly pick the guest what do you prefer اللي تأمر عليه what do you want your excellency what do you prefer ask the question okay okay so the question is dear audience name billion dollar billion dollar company which operates from South Indian village and offers software suits to over 100 million users worldwide شنو هي اسم الشركة اللي تبلغ قيمتها مليار دولار واللي تعمل من قرية جنوب الهند وتقدم مجموعات برمجيات لأكثر من 100 مليون مستخدم حول العالم في أحد عنده فكرة؟ أو oh, two people يلا I am coming عاد خلينا نشوف عاد الحين let's see عبد الله 
بس روح حق اللي هناك ولا روح اول شيء ناخذ احد من ربعنا؟ ها لا نروح ورا وني هنيك ورا وني هنيك خلاص لان ارفعوا ايدهم ما يخالف ذي رايز ذير هاندز وين هم؟ وير ار ذي؟ اوكي انا سامحني اي ويل كم تو يو ليتر بيكوز ايز بيفور يو جست فور جيف مي اونلي تو دي فور جيف مي اوكي؟ هلو سير هاو ار يو؟ اوكي اي ام كم تو يو كان اي سيت نير يو؟ خليني قاعد يمك Delegates, خلاص. I want to take a speech. What do you want to say about this conference? How do you see the occasion today? Uh, I think it was a great one and um, very inspiring that uh, we are able to see the lot of delegates is coming here. I think it will be really a fruitful one. Thanks for that. Thank you so much for your speech. Let's go for another guest. Yes, okay. Hello, everyone, and please uh, introduce yourself. Yeah, my name is Mufaddal. Uh, I work in Al Hakimi supermarket. Uh, the company what you are talking about is Zoho. Uh, it's situated in a very small village in uh, uh, Kerala, Kerala, in South India, and I, I, uh, they are providing yeah they are pro uh, they are providing uh, email services and all kind of hosting services. Actually, I want to ask you, is it the right answer? But I saw already people are clapping. I saw Guman like thank you so much. This is right, Zoho Corporation. Congratulations, and the prices are coming to you from the UV Technology Company. Thank you so much. So you already answered it correctly, Abdullah. It's okay. يعطيكم الصحة والعافية ونستكمل معاكم حضونا الكريم جدول هذا المؤتمر مثل ما قلنا لكم إحنا من بين الجدول المؤتمر عندنا أسئلة نقدمها للحساد الحضور. Dear audience, as already mentioned in the between the conference, the schedule of the conference, that we have a pop quiz just to refresh everybody, and they already presented by the sponsors of this conference. حضونا الكريم نستكمل معاكم جدول هذا المؤتمر والآن مع كلمة عضو مجلس إدارة غرفة التجارة والصناعة الكويت. Now dear audience, we are gonna hear a speech from the board member of Kuwait Chamber, Kuwait Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Mrs. Wafa Al Qatami. Please proceed to the stage. Good morning, good morning everybody. His Excellency Dr. Adarsh Sawika, Ambassador of India to the State of Kuwait, Excellencies and distinguished <laughs> attendees, on behalf of Kuwait Chamber of Commerce and Industry, I have the pleasure to participate in the Indian Kuwaiti uh, Information Technology Conference, uh, organized by the esteemed Embassy of India in Kuwait. In cooperation with the Hi. Let's come back down. Uh, in cooperation with the National Association of Software and Service Companies, NASCOM, who visit Kuwait with a delegation that includes prominent companies. Uh, in the field of IT and software industry. Kuwaiti business sector follows with admir admir admiration the great progress that India has achieved in this market, which, is, uh, which its value is estimated at 245 billion US dollar. You may agree with me that the ICT sector has become an essential need to all business, especially the knowledge economy, e-commerce, and cybersecurity as well. Companies operating in banking, finance, insurance, telecommunication, and many other sectors are keen to be in line with the advanced technologies in order to offer the proper digital services and to ensure the risk avoidness of electronic piracy and loss of important data. Therefore, we are looking forward in this meeting to learn more about the IT and the software industry of the Indian companies. And we hope to see bilateral partnership with their Kuwaiti uh, counterparts. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to see this opportunity to shed lights on the bilateral trade exchange between our two friendly <coughs> countries, which show that India is one of the major trading partners with Kuwait. 
ranking fourth exporter in 2021, and the value of commercial exchange amount to 2.362 billion US dollar in the year 2021, as we aspire to advance step further in our relationship and urge to exert more efforts to raise the trade volume and um, reinforce the joint economic ties between Kuwait and India. On its part, Kuwait Chamber of Commerce and Industry confirms its keenness to extend all possible, uh, possible cooperation toward achieving the mutual economic goals. I really, uh, this is not in my world, but I really, uh, I have to mention my admiration, admiration to what I have heard from His Excellency and all the speakers about how the technology uh, sector in India is advancing. It's really great and we wish them all the success. Thank you. A special thanks to the board member of Kuwait Chamber and Commerce and Industry, KCCI Kuwait, Mrs. Wafa al Qatami. And now we're going to move it to continue our speech for today, dear audience. But now it's time for the presentation. Presentation and the topics about that presentation about Indian IT powers and the presence in Gulf, which focus on Kuwaiti projects, experiences, and also potential. And he will going to present to us uh, the Regional Director of Tata Consulting Services, TCS India. So miss, please welcome Mr. Ajay Singh. Good morning and... Uh... Welcome to this uh, conference today. And I represent here NASCOM and also TCS. I head TCS business for Middle East and Afri Middle East, based out of Dubai. And uh, just wanted to take you through the Indian technology industry's success and how NASCOM has been at the forefront of it, coordinating, facilitating, and promoting Indian IT industry globally and across different forums. So if you see the Indian technology industry, uh, we have been consistently growing in double digit in constant currency terms, always been a net job creator, always been a net job creator for the economy. And our contribution to the GDP of India has been 7.5%, which is from a sector perspective quite high and we contribute to more than half of our service exports from India, 53%. This year we probably will clock about $245 billion in terms of revenue, and, uh, and the net increase would be about close to $20 billion, $19 billion here. And the good thing about Indian IT industry is that uh, generally most of our business comes from abroad. So when we talk about Indian IT industry, most companies would have anything between 80 to 90% of the business coming from global markets. And in terms of global market, US typically leads and followed by Europe. And, uh, and then uh, Asia Pacific, ANZ, and uh, in India and Middle East Africa. And there, there is a domestic push as well, but probably the domestic push for most companies is around 10 to 20%. And main sectors typically are BFSI, uh, retail, telecom, manufacturing, healthcare, etc. From an employment perspective, uh, Indian IT industry has created 5.4 million jobs. India is in a unique position in terms of uh, getting about 1.6 million engineers every year. And this is a pool that is probably not available to most countries in the world, which can be leveraged from a digital transformation, AI, and IT transformation perspective. We have 36% of this 5.4 million as digitally skilled, and this is, a, this is a number that keeps changing. Most companies, when they report their quarterly numbers, change, uh, constantly improve on these numbers. And uh, we employ 165 plus nationalities. 27,000 tech startups 
and as uh, Mr. Dr. Adha said, to 23 new unicorns in the last year, 25% growth in early stage funding. And as uh, the ambassador said, that digital public infrastructure that India has created is something that is probably class leading in the world and a lot of, lot of countries would want to emulate that. This is a glimpse of the growth of technology service revenues over the last year, $20 billion. And if you see the export revenue grows, is, has been growing over a, about 12%, 12 11.4% 11 every year, while the domestic revenue growth is 13%, which also indicates that the Indian market is growing pretty well, probably a bit higher than the global market. And it also indicates the leaps and bounds by which the digital infrastructure and the digital transformation has happened in India in the last uh, seven, eight years. So from a growth in digital uh, revenues perspective, most companies believe that about 35% of their revenues is digital. Actually, what is also is happening now is that people have stopped reporting digital revenues separately because today all, rev all transformation is digital. So, uh, and without digital transformation, there's no business strategy. Analytics, cloud, cybersecurity are fastest growing segments. This includes AI and Gen AI now. And increasing focus on deep technology, this is uh, reflected in the number of uh, tech startups and number of deep tech startups, about 3,000 of them. It's also reflected in the choice of India as a center for uh, global R&D by different, uh, different global organizations. It's also reflected by the number of global capability centers that are being set up in India. 73% from a 73% of all tech patents filed in India in, to, in last year were in emerging technologies and uh, as I mentioned, 1,400 global R&D centers in India and the increase in uh, global capability centers, etc. So I mentioned about the 5.4 million uh, workforce. We have been number one in AI skill penetration globally number two globally in terms of AI machine learning talent pool, number three in cloud professionals globally. And this number probably will change and probably will become number one in most all of these. And from a diversity of workplace perspective, out of this 5.4 million uh, employees or employed uh, by the sector, two million are women. 36% is a very high uh, gender diversity to aspire for, for most global uh, countries. 70% are millennials, 20% are Gen Zs, and the anywhere working or work, uh, hybrid working has been adopted uh, very well by India and courtesy also so, so pushed by COVID. 85% of, of employees operate in a hybrid model and 25 tier two and tier three emerging tech hubs in India. When I talk tier, tier two, tier three, we're basically talking about not the top four, five cities that everybody knows, Delhi, Bombay, Bangalore, Hyderabad, Chennai, Calcutta. And uh, so this, uh, this tech transformation, this uh, tech services transformation is moving to the next layer of cities. And uh, the offshore share has increased, uh, continues to increase from 50% to about 51%. And Moving to, see, offshore basically is also uh, something that uh, is a key element in this time when some of the economies are facing a downturn because offshoring helps you to optimize, op uh, optimize your expense and deliver the same kind of services, etc., that you want to deliver in a, at a better, better cost. Uh, having said this, I would uh, just want to introduce uh, my company, TCS, and uh, what we do in Kuwait. So first of all, uh, we have been present in Kuwait since quite some time, and we have an office in Al Raya Center. TCS is somehow, you can say, the bellwether of IT services industry. We were formed in 1958. Form, and it, we, are, we are completing about 55 years, and in this 55 years journey, we are by different standards 
either the number two or the number three IT services company globally. And uh, we are as global as they come. Uh, when we say, when you talk about a global company, the first criteria is how much of your business comes from out of your base country or in addition, apart from your base country. And for TCS, that percentage is about close to 92 to 93%, of which about 50 or 55 odd percent would come from the US, about close to somewhere between 55 to 60 percent would come from North America. And that figure at a revenue of $28 billion in last, last financial year, that figure would be upwards of $10 billion. In Europe as well as UK would be doing close to about $7 billion. In Latin America, we do a close to $2 billion. In Australia and New Zealand, we do a close to $1.5 billion. Our Japan business is close to a billion dollars. We have a good presence in China, Asia Pacific, and India business is close to $3 billion. And our business in Middle East, Middle East and Africa is close to $500 million. So we say in jest, we are present in all inhabited continents on this planet. So we leave Antarctica for that. <laughs> so, and a business, the unique thing about TCS is our business is, is basically structured by industry verticals. What it really does is that it helps our clients uh, leverage our business knowledge of 55 years. When we, when we talk to them, when we advise them, when we consult them, and we, and we deliver our solutions, et cetera, solutions to them. And each of these business verticals that you see here are upwards of a billion dollars. So something to be a business group or a business, vert, business vertical for TCS, it has to be at one billion dollar benchmark. So what it does is that it accumulates a lot of experience within TCS of that particular industry sector, which helps us to contextualize what we do to our clients' environment. So as, as you would see, uh, banking, is, banking, financial services, and insurance is the largest market, as it probably, again, close to 45% of our business comes from banking, financial services, and insurance. And within that also, as things have grown and business has grown, we have created subunits of banking, capital markets, which includes uh, stock exchanges, uh, market infrastructure companies, uh, and finance, other financial institutions. Insurance, again, separately. Life sciences and healthcare is another big business segment, close to probably about $5 billion now. We work globally with a lot of large life sciences companies and on a lot of payers and also some providers in healthcare. And uh, retail is another large vertical, again, upwards of $3 billion, probably $3.5 billion. And, is it, and uh, from a travel and logistics perspective, which will include your airlines, your logistic companies, et cetera, it's again a significant business upwards of a billion dollars. Communication, media, and information services includes telecom, again, close to $3 billion. Energy resources and utility, utilities includes oil and gas and metals, again, close to about $1.5 billion. And education is a new business vertical that we have, sta that we have started. Our focus is on both K-12 as well as the university segment. And public services, that is government business, has been, uh, has been a consistently sizable vertical for TCS, upwards of a billion dollars, though mainly in, in India. And in India, we have been the pioneer in terms of the, pro pro the projects that we have done for the government. And uh, when a when when number of companies in India wouldn't want to go into the public sector business, we were the pioneers who created a lot of public sector IT infrastructure in India. So the, the reason to mention this is, one, to understand that when we talk to you, we'll talk or we'll try to talk your language in terms of the business segments that you belong to. And two, that if you see, even in Kuwait, the key business segments would be probably government, banking, financial services, retail, and telecom, and oil and gas. In terms of uh, the services that we offer to these, these business segments, uh, you see, 
consulting led approach is what we what we focus on cloud is a very important component of our strategy and our revenues and our business so much so that we set up three separate cloud units to increase the focus on each of the three hyperscalers so we have a separate aws cloud practice we have a separate google cloud practice and we have a separate microsoft azure cloud practice and for uh, for customers who would like to have a private cloud and which is uh, which is in control we offer also offer in some markets enterprise cloud tcs enterprise cloud and today the world is basically moving into a multi cloud environments and hybrid clouds so managing cloud expense and managing cloud efficacy and optimization is a key element and that is also part of our offering it tcs interactive is the customer experience part of it which includes the digital experience and also the in house or in house stakeholder experience data and analytics includes the data analytics layer infra, uh, the infrastructure piece of the data analytics it includes artificial intelligence it includes generative ai cyber security as you all know is a big buzz buzzword when when anything that we do is enabled by it so cyber security becomes very important both from a cultural perspective as well as infrastructure perspective or solutions perspective network and solutions and services uh basically if you in india right now we are pioneering 5g implementation for one of our government telco companies this is uh, 5g technology is typically has been generally uh, either with the western western world or with uh, some companies in the eastern world in china and uh, number of companies the number of countries want to have a safe and safe technology safe 5g technology which they can rely on and in this endeavor for the for the for, for india we have partnered with bsnl the government uh, the, the government sector player to to implement a 5g uh, technology set up for them iot and digital engineering has wide applications across areas like oil and gas across retail across uh, manufacturing across metals and mining etc and this is for tcs more than a billion dollar business in itself and enterprise solution covers the vast gamut of all enterprise solutions sap oracle salesforce etc and uh, enterprise cognitive business operations is basically uh, helping you run your operations in terms of the the these uh, the products you have the services you deliver to your clients your clients as an in internal as well as external clients what you what we basically used to call managed services so today both the rendering of managed services as well as business services coolies is into helping you provide a, a service line service service based uh, service sla based uh, enterprise uh, enterprise cognitive business operations sustainability is a big focus and we have solutions in that area and uh, as sustain from a sustainability solution perspective we help clients track their carbon footprint help manage uh, their uh, carbon and, and journey to uh, carbon neutrality and carbon net uh, zero so the key uh, message i want to mention is that we have consistently been number one in customer satisfaction and um, in, in multiple markets and we have most of our tcs uh, about 94 95% of our business is repeat business from existing customers what it means at our size is that one we work very closely with our existing customers and the ability to do that is because we we offer a broad bouquet of service basically what we call a full services play to our customers since we offer a full services play to our customers we are able to add value across the value chain and that helps us retain our customers for longer and reach this parameter of 95% of our business coming from existing customers this is not to say that the new order book or the new logos or net new logos are basically less they keep on adding but at a size obviously 95% is a repeat business so customer is at a center of our, all our investments all our focus we have a separate research and innovation wing uh, 
uh, which has 3,000 patents granted. We employ PhDs, people who independently do research in their areas, and they, are, they don't have a revenue target. They work with our uh, business units to bring new solutions and services to our customers. This is basically we deliver through uh, sandbox environments and innovation centers, which we call pace ports, where we bring in the customers, the startups, and our own R&I team and our own uh, basically business units to help deliver uh, solutions to the client together with them kind of explore, you, uh, prob uh, explore solutions for their problems and then basically roll it out. In, uh, in, uh, in context of this research and innovation, uh, we talk about a co-innovation network which, in uh, uh, which includes academia. We have about tie-ups with more than 150 universities globally, startups, different startup centers right from Silicon Valley to other places, India, everything, alliance partners across the board, and accelerators and VCs. And uh, the, the investments of TCS in terms of uh, this ecosystem can be, can be understood from the fact that we have a TCS center at Carnegie Mellon, which has been set up with investment of $35 million. We have uh, Cornell Tech, the Tata Center at Cornell Tech, and again, uh, set up with sizable investments. We work with the Royal College of Arts in London. So there's a list of uh, partnerships and investments that we have globally. In terms of employees, 600,000 employees, 152 nationalities, 36% women in the workforce, and 100,000 people trained in generative AI competencies. I, I want to take a minute to talk about our presence in the Middle East. Uh, uh, we, our presence in the Middle East is mainly in the Gulf, uh, Saudi, UAE, Kuwait, uh, Oman, and Qatar. In Kuwait, we have been there for quite some time. Uh, mainly, our businesses have been in the banking and financial services area, and uh, both in terms of products, that is uh, products for core banking, market infrastructure, et cetera, as well as, uh, as, well as services. Also, in, the, in retail, the retail uh, part of the conglomerates here. And uh, the other thing is uh, we have been started, we have also started working with oil and gas companies. And government is a big focus for us. So our country representative, uh, Fahim, is here. Uh, he is based out of here. And we look at Kuwait as a sizable market. And over the years, over the last uh, year, we have seen a lot of uh, traction in this market. And uh, we believe that in line with the Digital Vision 2035, uh, making Kuwait fully digital, uh, we believe that we'll partner with each one of you to help you achieve your digital transformation journey and guide you through that, provide you solutions and services and make it a success together. Thank you. A special thanks to the Regional Director of Data Consulting Services, TCS India, Mr. Ajay Singh. Before we're gonna continue our schedule of the conference for today, I will go for our second pub quiz. قبل ما نكمل معاكم نستكمل معاكم برنامج هذا المؤتمر عندي لكم السؤال الثاني بس الجواب ما راح نسمع الحين راح نسمع معاكم بعد البرزنتيشن الثاني now we're gonna ask our next question but I will not get the answer now I will get it after the second presentation the question is what does PAAS stand for شنو نعي تاني كلمة PAAS دوروا عليها سيرش فور ات وراح نسالكم عليها تالي ان شاء الله. Now we're gonna continue our discussion with our second presentation and the topic about a deep dive into the transformative use cases for generate AI. And he will gonna present to us the founder and CEO Connect the Dots Technology, CTD Technology India. So please welcome Gani Suma Sindram. So dear audience, you know, we usually in, in our shows and the live shows, we usually changing the schedule, you know, for the sake, for the benefit, for the conference. I already asked you before, let, like the question is, what PAS stands for? 
ماذا تعني معنى تعني الحروف الأربعة باللغة الإنجليزية P A A S اللي يعرفها يرفع عيد عشان أعطيكم الجائزة التالية ذا أوريدي قاتا أوكي في واحد رفع اسمه أوريدي ريز ديز هاند احنا سعيدين جدا اليوم بوجودكم معنا من خلال هذا المؤتمر الهندي الكويتي تكنولوجي مع مؤسسه 2023 والحلو اليوم المشاركات الموجوده اليوم الاجواء الحلوه يعطيك الصحه والعافيه اللي موجوده معنا هني يعطيك الصحه والعافيه هلا مرحبا مسي عليك بالخير نتعرف عليك معك سعد العجمي حياك الله يا هلا مرحبا فيك طبعا استاذ سعد احنا التقينا معك قبل شويه وانت من الناس اللي مهتم في الامور هذه فشنو واتس ذا مينينج اوف بي اي اي اس ستاندز فور شنو معنات الحروف الاربعه اتس برودكت اف اي سيرفيس ار يو شور ام شور كونجراتيوليشن ذاتس ذا رايت انسر يستاهل ستاند اب بلاس يستاهل تحيه الف الف مبروك الحين نستكمل معاكم حضون الكريم جدول هذا المؤتمر ما شاء الله شوفوا الناس ما شاء الله عليها اللي طلع شيء وايد حلو نستكمل معاكم الحين جدول هذا المؤتمر ضيوفنا الاكارم now we're going to continue dear audience about the schedule of the conference so about this one سليمان يعطيك العافيه تدرون احنا كل شوي قاعد نغير كل شوي كل هذا لمصلحه الجميع now let's continue dear audience about our presentation dear audience so well, the topic will be about a deep dive into the transformative use cases of the generate ai and the, the The topic we're going to present to us, the founder and the CEO Connect and the DOS Technology, CTDS Technology India. So please welcome again Suma Syndrome and also Mr. Ganesh, his surname. Please proceed. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, all. Am I audible in the last? Right. Uh, I'm Ganesh, uh, founder and uh, CEO of Connected Dots Technology. Um, how many of you are using Gen A? Uh, one, I'm not asking the Indian delegation. I know most of you are using. So how many of you are using Gen A here? If you can raise your hands, please. Um, I can see two, three people only using that. Right. Uh, I think um, um, that's a topic we are going to say that. What are the various use cases which we can use in Gen A? That's our main purpose here, right? So, next slide. So, Generate AI, it is, um, you may think that it started only in November last year, but that is not a true. It's been there for a quite long time, almost two, three years, the experiment is happening. Uh, but it is, came to the general availability only in November 2022, right? And uh, even the chat GPT, uh, the founder and uh, Elon Musk and all, they didn't realize that this is going to be a, this much impact. Uh, but uh, later, when it has come to the general availability, it was a really, really grateful one. And that gives a lot of confidence for us to even develop, right? There may be a lot of questions around you that is GNA is a secure one, right? Um, that is a standard question everyone is asking that uh, my data will be go away. Even some of the companies like Samsung, Verizon also banned some three, four months back. Uh, but they are coming back here. In fact, we are implementing GNA solution for Verizon. Even Samsung also is coming back because it is inevitable. Uh, Gen A is an inevitable. We really wanted to use it here. So classic example of the use cases are uh, text generation, image and mu uh, the slides are moving up. Yeah, music generation and video. These are the few things which we can use for Gen A. Uh, as we are having a different industries here, we will also touch base a couple of things here. And which industry, how do we can use a use case here? Next slide. Uh, I see that a lot of education industry people are here. So in this stuff, um, generally this uh, technology is placed only, you know, like a virtual training and all this kind of thing. But the Gen A is became like a very personalized one. And not only that, it also learned from the learners. So that's a key things which is happening. If you are heard about Baidu's in India, so they are using a lot of Gen A solution, Oita Junior, all this kind of thing. And it is very powerful one. So the content creation is is easy, and uh, you know um, it's very very easy on the content creations. You don't need to have the um, you know the professor from Harvard or or from IIT professor in India to come and do this. It, you can do it on your own uh, as long as you are asking the right questions and all this kind of stuff. Uh, when it comes to the scenario-based learning, I mean that's very important uh, because. Uh, 
the education system in some area is not up to the mark, but when, you, when people are into the real world, then they are facing the challenges. So that's an another area where we can use in Gen A solution too. Uh, when you, and uh, customized revision materials. Some people are good in, uh, maybe in a Mac, some people are good in languages, science, but some area they may not be good. So how do you provide the customized learning on that? So Gen A is provide a solution, not like a generalized one of giving the learning, it can give the customized one. Uh, interactive simulations, um, it, is, it is a very powerful one. As I gave an example, like how Baijus is uh, using this for a very long time on the Gen I, and that's the one where we can capitalize to. Uh, personalized examples, uh, because the way of learning, uh, it will be uh, different from each student, right, when it's come to the, um, on the learning part. But the professor is giving in a very standard approach, like the way I'm talking here, uh, how you are going to give a very personalized one, so that the, the person who is an average student can understand, and uh, the smart student can understand in a different way, and that's kind of personal learning also is possible here. And many in universities in, in India are also adopting the JNA solutions now. Uh, when come to the, um, on the fly, we can create it. The test books, which is, should be very modernized uh, because the technology is evolving day in, day, in, day out. And, uh, you know, it's like, like a, it will take a decade earlier and all for any technology to be evolved. But now it is just in a matter of time, things is happening that. That is an another classic example where you can use even Gen A solutions. Um, Diversified learning uh, stuff is very required because the world is really changed. It is not like whatever we are within this, you know, in this country or another country. We ought to learn from other countries on other countries is the best practice. And that is also, it is a matter of time where we can learn it here. Uh, we can move on next slide. Uh, so the assessment is a, uh, is a big challenge uh, when you take uh, considerable India as a population like, you know, almost a billion population, uh, largest population in the world. and uh, largest in engineering and MBBS uh, doctorate, all the stuff is there. Very difficult for an assessment. And uh, in that area only where uh, this one is really helping, the assessment tool is really helping on the Gen A solutions. It not only that, and when you're hiring a large peop a large uh, members in, a, in an organization like TCS or Cognizant or Deloitte, right, or KPMG, um, very difficult for them who are doing the long, you know, big hire on that. So they are using this assessment tool using Gen A solutions, and that helped them to get the right candidate and uh, avoid the fake proxy interview. All this kind of thing can be really avoided. And it is all the interviews is be completely uh, by Gen A, very personalized one. Not only that, the interviewee also get the information about where he is standing and also can learn learn from their, you know, uh, their uh, whatever the areas they are lacking on that. So that kind of personalized assessment also can provide. So this can be used even education or in any organization also you can use it. It is not only for the white color job, even you can give it for a blue color job, right, in, in the factory or, or, or in other areas where uh, the skilled labor is not having the, you know, adequate knowledge, they can go with this kind of learning and can help it here. Yeah, move on please, yeah. So this is an, another one of the 24 by 7. I'm a night board, so I learn many things in the night. I don't do it in the morning. So when you want to provide a 24 by 7 kind of learning kind of thing, how do you provide that? And uh, across the globe, you need to really want an information. These are the classic example what we can you know use of it. Um, um, one one thing with one thing which I want to say that um, um, the customized problem sets. So you know that is also is a really key things which we can provide it here. Yeah, move on. Um, so that's that's all the uh, educa I mean the education side. There is a lot more there in the education side on the um, and the use cases. Now I'd like to move on healthcare. How many people are here from healthcare industry? If you can raise your hand, please. Yeah, I will fast track. Yeah. So I will. I need to fast track this. I'm getting indication. Yeah. So the healthcare industries uh, there are using is very personalized one, and it is not only predictive analytical which we can do that. Um, also, we can do the uh, and a proactive, uh, proactive also, which we can do that. I'm skipping the slide. Next slide, please. Uh, this is on the banking industries. So, banking industries, we adopted a lot of Gen A solution on banking, which is uh, your KYC kind of thing, and Tyler made a uh, financial education, all this kind of stuff, which we can do that, and custom saving challenges, which we can provide as stuff. Yeah, move on, please. Next slide. Uh, this is another insurance industries. Yeah, move on. So uh, insurance are a very, very clear thing about the enrollment process automations, claims 
uh, process automation as well as the fraudulent which we can avoid it. Uh, that these are the use cases which we can use in GNA solutions. Next slide. Yeah, we implemented for uh, uh, one of the largest uh, retail like uh, Reliance and Aditya Billa for the 2D and 3D automation, I mean 2D, 3D automation also GNA solution which we provided and that's a classic one here, yeah. Yeah, so this is a very, if I don't talk about petroleum oil and quite then what else I can talk. So these are the various uh, simulation which we can use GNA um, and this is a very classic one and it can be used in uh, very widely for uh, all your simulation because is, uh, accuracy is very important here and the simulation on the safety protocol and the refinery market demand forecast uh, because market demand is, is only, only is the important one than the economic also that we can use it here. We'll talk more, we'll talk more about it because I'm running out of time, yeah, move on. Uh, one classic example of the use case, move on. So this is an unstructured data, whatever I talked about the text and how the solution we provided, next one. Yeah, so I will give few things, just a foot for thought as we are also in between the lunch here. What are the AA tools which we can use it? Move on please. So we can use ChatGPT, most familiar one. Then we can also use Jasper for, that, for a tool design anything. And Google Brad is coming on most uh, very advanced one now. So that is also for your uh, uh, chatbot kind of thing. Move on please. So uh, we have a, for a avatar creation, we can use this. For a video generation, you can use that. Uh, for a video creation tool also, these are the tools which is uh, widely used. There are plenty of tools, but this is all well-recognized tools are there. Move on. So DALI is a very powerful tool on the creating the realistic images. Then texture generation also, you can use a mid-journey. Uh, you don't need to create any like avatar movie and all this using mid journey can anything can do this stuff. In fact, we created a couple of, uh, you know, short videos also with using that. Then GitHub and Amazon code guru is coming for the, especially for the developers here. And deep code is also another tool is there. Right, uh, Jene is not a buzzword and even India is creating a lot of LLM like Zogo is creating their own LLM. Many big companies are coming on that. So I would request you to collaborate with us and capitalize our strength on the you know, LLM and, and GNA solutions uh, so that together we can make a big difference. Thank you. Dear audience, now we have uh, later, we have also a discussion panel. Before they were going to prepare for the discussion panel, now we're going to have a tour to take the opinion and perspective for our dear audience. Hana waqt al-an, rah nintakil ma'akum, inshallah, li al-jalsa al-hawari al-halqa niqashiya, biz gabulha, rah nakhad jawla hii ma'a hadun al-kareem, nakhad raihum al-yom li habi sharakna al-yom, hadhi al-farha, wa nitkalam akthar, nitarif a raihum fi hadhi al-mu'tamar, yaatik al-sahha wal-aafi, nitarif alik. Allah afiq, Asam al-Khishnam, raiz tafidi shirkat kainat. حياك الله يا هلا مرحبا فيك شنو حاب تقولون بهالمناسبة حاب تقولها بالعربي ولا بالإنجليزي؟ ما كنت أقول in English I think it's better so I would like to thank His Excellency for his invitation it's an honor it's definitely the information the numbers that we've seen is an eye opener the advancement that India has been actually doing is actually in quantum leaps. The, the, the approach or the uh, advancements that's, that we've seen actually in India and the impressive numbers and the achievements that we've seen of late are actually uh, astronomical and we would like to commend you actually on all the events and all the uh, advancements and the signatures that we've seen even in the financial services industry. Truly a magnificent, a magnificent approach. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much. Mwassin Alek, your good name? Uh, Dr. Rami Sahar, I'm from Broativity, Kuwait, Managing Director for Technology Consulting. I would like to thank everyone who uh, contributed for this successful event. We are very happy to, uh, to know uh, more about the Indian-based uh, 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 technology companies on contributing with Kuwait uh, digital journey and digital transformation. We are eager to know more about those companies and 
collaborate again more into the successful uh, plans that we have in Kuwait. I'm very happy and thank you very much, uh, Highness Ambassador. And uh, we'd, look, we'd like to see more events like that to get connected with more uh, um, uh, technology companies from India. India is the, the base and the hub of technology. And I'm sure that this is not, will not be the first time will be more successful events uh, as this. Thank you very much for your organization. And uh, I would like to uh, finish with seeing the, uh, who will win the prize. Okay, inshallah for sure. We are very excited to see who will gonna win the prize. And of course, we want to take a word from our Kareem. We would like to take also another speeches from our already our dear audience. We want to share a word. Who wants to share with us about his speech? Or we're gonna go randomly. Hello, everybody. Okay, so I'm coming here. Hello, sir. And your good name? My name is Sibi Paul. I am from Silent College Human Badness Group. We are representing for V3 Technologies. Thank you so much for joining us. What do you want to say for this conference? How do you see today the schedule of the conference and also the speakers? In the conference, uh, I would like to thank you, Our Excellency, um, uh, uh, for organizing this uh, conference here. This will give an opportunity to uh, interact with the Indian uh, IT professionals to go to uh, increasing the uh, relationship and increasing the uh, improving the get to know more about the uh, IT infrastructure in India and uh, definitely it will uh, give a more support to grow our bilateral uh, relationship relationship yeah yes, thank you so much thank you so much for joining us today واحنا طبعا من خلال وجودنا اليوم قاعد نتعرف على الحضور الكريم وكل واحد فينا حاب انه يقول لنا بخصوص هذه الفعاليه منو عندنا الشخص الجاي منو حاب ان احنا يشاركنا طبعا ورايه في هذا يعطيك الصحه والعافيه يا هلا والله من. امسي عليك بالخير موصين عليك من طبعا من خطوط جوية الكويتيه نتعرف عليك اوكي ماي نيم از عبد المنعم عبد السلام اي يوز تو هيد اي تي ديبارتمنت فور 10 ييرز ناو اي ام تشانسلر فور ذا تشيرمان في الكويت ايرويز uh, actually i am not surprised to see how advanced indian uh, talents and skill set have reached because I have been working for a long, long time with Indian colleagues where I have seen them uh, prove themselves. And uh, it's not a surprise to see, to see Tata and other uh, companies uh, improving themselves uh, where I believe the Indian superpower is going to lead by 2050, the lead the world. So wish you all the best and thank you everyone for organizing such event. And I wish we will have more and more to come. Thank you so much for joining us. Yeah. Okay. So now, dear audience, is the time for our panel dis discussion for today. So first of all, we're going to mention the panelists, our guests for today. So please welcome everybody from the VP Sales and, and, and Viv India, Mr. Navin Party, and also the co-founder and CEO of Techno Task Business Solutions Private Limited India. Please welcome Mr. Adil Hussain Sayed. And also, let's welcome also the Chief IT the Sector, Sitra Kuwait, Mr. Mohammed al -Turra. And also the Chief Technology Officer, MBK Kuwait, Mr. Mark Diamond. And also, the, we call the Director for the Network and the Security, they are United Kuwait, Mr. Mohammed Abu Atiyah. Please welcome everybody for this discussion panel. And now we're going to also mention the moderator, Mr. Ajay Singh. Please, all of you, proceed for the beginning of the discussion panel. So... We'll uh, probably start and uh, let the press join when he is in. So, thank you, panelists, for uh, being here, consenting to be here in this panel discussion. Uh, while a while a photographs are there at the background, but are probably where we belong to is probably hidden, right? So maybe we'll uh, have a short introduction about the name and where we where we are engaged presently, and then we'll take it forward. Mohammed. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for uh, having me, and uh, I thank Mr. Ambassador for sponsoring this event. And uh, my name is Mohammed Altura. I am uh, the market and competition chief of Citra. Uh, as you know, uh, Citra is uh, the regulator for telecom and IT in Kuwait. It's a government agency. And uh, we're very keen today to be with you and uh, discuss uh, the journey of digital transformation. 
Dipesh, you want to go next? Yeah, uh, hi, my name is Dipesh. Uh, I had a company called Bite Screen uh, based in India. Uh, we are a technology company, uh, mainly into networking, cyber security, and uh, uh, security trainings. Mark? Hi, uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name's Mark Diamond. Uh, I'm 10 weeks in Kuwait, so very new to the country. As you can tell by my accent, hopefully that I'm from Scotland. Um, I've been in the region for six years and recently joined National Bank of Kuwait as the Chief Technology and Transformation Officer. Um, but I also join you from previously being in Saudi Arabia and leading Al Raji Bank as part of its digitization and more recently in Dubai leading the digital payments agenda for Network International and I'm delighted to be here. So thank you. Okay, good afternoon, uh, my Kuwaiti, Indian, and other friends. Uh, my name is Naveen. I head up business development for a company called Enedev. I've been in the industry about 27 years, uh, probably the same vintage as Ajay, and I've been working for several large IT services companies before this. I think what I'm trying to get to the table is to explain to you digital transformation in very simple terms. Thank you. Yeah, hi, good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for having me here. My name is Mohammed Abatiya. I'm the director for the Network and Cybersecurity Solutions in DR, uh, looking after uh, these particular solutions for DR, where we have our uh, offices across the GCC. I have been into the domain for the past 18 years. So thank you all, and uh, it's a great panel to have. Uh, the regulator, the, the banker, the IT guys, from India and in front from Kuwait. So the topic is exploring full potential of IT cooperation between India and Kuwait. And uh, as you have seen through numerous presentations, and as a lot of us know, that Indian IT has been a great success story in the sense that Indian IT companies today provide solutions, services, and products globally in, in mature markets, major markets, to large corporations across the world. And uh, the success stories are there for all to see in terms of the global rankings as well. For example, my company itself is probably the second largest or the third largest IT services company globally, and there are others like us, right? And uh, recently, we see a lot of SaaS companies uh, coming up, a lot of product companies coming up. You had that quiz where Zoho's name came, right? and a lot of unicorns which are basically based on platforms and which have a huge IT components coming up and being lapped up by investors and having phenomenal valuations, et cetera. So I would like to basically in this context understand from Ask the Pace, uh, how do you see this uh, digital transformation in various industries and what do you see the challenges that your clients face? Um. So in the last seven years specifically, the digital transformation has been on one of the key agendas of most of the organizations. Uh, the way digital transformation is being perceived uh, from region to region, country to country, and vertical to vertical, I have seen is very, very different. Uh, the fundamental challenge which I believe that these organizations face is uh, the lack of awareness about where they want to strategize on their digital transformation and what is the end result that they wish to achieve from the transformation. And um, just like information technology, just like cyber security, uh, it's a very large platform being able to generate different kind of results for different kind of organizations. So fundamentally, I think uh, what most organizations miss out is the aspect that uh, they fail to start on the right platform because they are not able to chart out what exactly they want to achieve from the transformation that they are heading to. And it's, it becomes very, very chaotic and it becomes more towards a herd mentality that now that everyone is doing digital marketing, so let's do digital marketing. Then everybody is uh, moving towards cyber defense, so let's move towards cyber defense. I think a more focused approach about what is the end result that they wish to derive from uh, is something that will set the right benchmark, uh, set the right platform, and there onwards, building their strategy on top of it would always be more beneficial. So basically, you're saying strategy, business strategy, 
to digital strategy correct how does it enable exactly. and then basically what do we do and how do we how do we get around doing that yes and how do you address some of these challenges um as a company as an organization i think uh, it is important that organizations create how do you, how do you basically guide clients etc so basically i think uh, it's important that from a client side they create a team which is uh, you know which has members from various segments of the organization so that everyone can come together and discuss the challenges that they face and the kind of advantage that they are looking at that is first point second i think organizations or clients within themselves need to spend a lot of time upon training and awareness because creating the right charter uh, as a road map for the next 6 months for the next 12 months for the next 18 months is very important because that will help them build the structured um approach about what should be phase 1 what should be phase 2 what is it that they will achieve from phase 1 and phase 2 and so on and so forth so i think uh, getting themselves digital aware in terms of uh, the kind of strategies they want to put in and the right kind of teams coming together to work as one voice one representation for the organization working in silos creates a lot of chaos and it ends up in situations where you know different departments doing different initiatives and when they all come together the dots just don't join that's where i think the chaos comes in so navin if we, if i were to ask you the same how do you see this uh, digital transformation in different industries the challenges and how do you address in your business so assuming that we have a mixed audience out here and not all of them are familiar with the term even digital transformation uh, so for them you know i would like to say and i promise i'd do it in simple terms so digital transformation is not really only moving software and processes into a new environment it's really about taking a core area of a business and trying to monetize off that now this has huge ramifications it involves leadership thinking it involves us trying to figure out new markets because this digital transformation has the promise of taking you to new business new regions moving new products to market so the idea out here is that you must as a start think of digital transformation as two parts one is you're changing your business from the core and the second part and the lesser part is actually software processes and the software associated with it uh, us in the it industries especially seniors such as us have a very high context conversation that we try to give to you but we sometimes don't understand that many of the terms we are using is probably overhead transmission so i would submit the first challenge is understanding that it's not only about software it's about a core business change and a way to mitigate that quite frankly is if you're a small company you probably want to have a um, what I'll, i'll say a mutual discovery session with the vendor company so they are very good at understanding what you're trying to do trying to monetize in your business for a larger company i would say maybe you should consider having a, a you know a digital transformation officer if you're medium or large size because without which you will not be able to navigate you know some of the major complexities that a large business entails okay okay and uh, if i want to get a regulator's view right so in the middle east uh, we see that a lot of uh, technology adoption over the period of time uh, uh, has been really pushed by the governments the regulators so mr mohammed how do you see this uh, here in kuwait policies and regulations playing a key role in facilitating growth of technology sector Well now you forced me to admit that my experience now extended for 30 years in this business. <laughs> so I feel a bit uh, going above mid age now. <clears throat> well I worked for Microsoft in mid 90s for 19 years. Uh, at the end of my time with Microsoft uh, the cloud just kicked out. And I remember <clears throat> I was going I was responsible for Salesforce. So I was going to customer and tell them oh we're going to have to move you to cloud that was like in 2013 and the customer saying do you think I'm going to have my data safe in your cloud how would I know that the data is not physically next to me so moving to cloud probably is going to make me you know get fired or something 
So as my colleague said, awareness uh, was not as strong as now. Seeing uh, as a regulator the digital transformation as a journey, we have to make sure that we facilitate the easy regulation to encourage uh, the government sector and the country in the national scale to go to the cloud. Now, as a regulator, we have to, of course, come up with uh, a policy uh, that most countries are doing called the cloud first policy so that we push, we encourage people to go to the cloud. Now, when you think about the challenges other than the regulation, of course, the regulation must be very simple, make it easy to transition people. Uh, at the same time, we must consider the security, we must consider uh, the availability, and uh, of course the business continuity is what uh, makes the cloud even uh, more special than the traditional uh, IT. Uh, so we said first, what, is, what are we going to get out of the digital transformation as a country? So we thought about making people life easier is a pillar in this journey. So people can you know, do their things without physically being there try to finish things remotely with mobile apps, things like that. Um, the sec and especially with education and healthcare, that makes a huge difference. When you make a digital transformation, make people life easier, you can make education uh, surround students with many uh, sources of information other than the teacher. And you can make healthcare goes to people and instead of only people goes to healthcare. Uh, more proactive with digital transformation. But when I talk about the pillar of making people life easier, and then the other pillar is to, to develop the economy, if you think about every country economic indexes, you will find some, a lot of indexes can be fixed only putting a smart solution into it, Correct. you know, based on digital transformation. Yeah. I give an example, customs procedures. It has an index in the World Economic Forum GCI, the Global Competitive Index, and that's they, they scale this of how easy the country can import, export goods, you know, inside the economy, and that index can be fixed with smart solution with digital transformation, cloud solution, Correct. can automate this process and make it easy, you know, and improve the index. So that's the other pillar. The third pillar is supporting innovation. So in the old days, you have to create big labs, you have to invest a lot, you have to uh, make sure that every region has facilities for innovators and entrepreneurs and working with academia, of course. But now with the cloud, you don't need to do those type of infrastructure investment to do innovation because the cloud can create a virtual environment for innovators to, to uh, come up with the new ideas and new uh, apps to make people's life much easier and develop economies. So these are the three main things that we want to get out of the digital transformation, making people's life easier, develop economy, and uh, support innovation. Now, for us as a regulator, we have to analyze the ecosystem as well that's going to support this journey. And we find that we are missing... Uh, a lot of uh, resources in Kuwait, especially when we talk about the new trends, AI, big data management, IoT, blockchain. These are the new trends that came out of this journey, out of the digital transformation, that we must have a, an ecosystem, especially the entrepreneurs and small businesses. This, when we analyze the market as the regulator, we don't find a strong entrepreneur segment in the ICT market in Kuwait we find a very strong segment in the food chain, of course, as we all know, in Kuwait. It's probably number one in the region. But we would like ICT to be the same. So definitely our uh, friends in India can help us because they are probably number one, for sure number one, when it comes to that segment in India. And this is where we can definitely develop uh, the ecosystem in Kuwait and have more ties to our economies. Because to me, economy ties with, with people and exchange of ideas much more than a physical uh, hardware or, you know, or, or, or product. Because the intellectuality uh, connection is the strongest. 
And uh, we would like to have this sort of a bridge between Kuwait and India to have a very, you know, um, harmonized, let's say, put it, harmonized uh, entrepreneur ecosystem in the ICT. And the innovation as well, because that would lead to innovation uh, and that will help Kuwait to make people life easier and develop economy. So that's what I would really focus on. Of course, my colleague mentioned the awareness. I think the awareness now is getting better. It's not yet to the optimum level, uh, but it's getting better. You see less people concern about security when they go to the cloud because they now more aware that there's encryption tools. Uh, there are uh, so many tools that can keep their data secured and limit the access uh, of data, of sensitive data. So, uh, Conclusion is, this is a very uh, important relationship between Kuwait and India in this journey. And uh, I, I feel very optimistic because Kuwait in a location, uh, very strategic location in the region, this relationship has no border limits because it's, it's, it's all over the internet and all over the world. It's a global industry now. So, uh, you know, making solution in Kuwait can with the, our Indian partners can extend those solutions outside of the country as well, because we have no borders in the ICT. And I thank you very much. Thank you. So India and Kuwait could be part of an extended technology and innovation ecosystem, and the relationships of over 100 years will move to this new chapter. Exactly. And any specific steps that Citra has taken you would like to highlight? Yes, we uh, work closely with Kate and uh, Kadiba to attract investors to li and listen to the investors, see how can we make things easier for them to practice their business. Uh, this is very important. And we always consult with them uh, on our uh, regulations as well. Before we release it, we get their feedback to make sure that uh, you know, we're doing the right thing. And uh, of course, policy is always developed. It's a non-ending game. Uh, we just have to, you know, follow the trends. And we have to make sure as a regulator, we don't stop any innovation. We just regulate it. Uh, I give you another example with the WhatsApp. Some countries are stopping the voice over IP. We don't. We never stop any regulation. We would like to build on it. And uh, uh, for, you know, for, for the future, I'm sure with the cloud, we got to have to now we have done the foundation. We did the cl first cloud policy. We did the data classification policy. And uh, also, uh, we have uh, good uh, players in Kuwait. Uh, we have Google, AWS, and hopefully Indian company, and Microsoft, and some Indian companies will, will come in and join us in this journey. Uh, we find Kadiba is a very extended arm to encourage uh, the, uh, the foreign investments in Kuwait. And, uh, you know, we are open for feedback uh, with our investors uh, anytime. You can come and, you know, uh, t tell us your recommendation, tell us your concern. You know, this is an evolution process that we all have to be uh, working together to improve. Thank you. Mark, coming to you. So you have a pretty high pressure job in terms of being the chief technology officer of the largest bank in Kuwait. And it's not only the largest bank in Kuwait, you are present across the region, right? National Bank of Kuwait. So how, how do you see basically uh, in this era of digital and AI, uh, from a strategy perspective, National Bank of Kuwait evolving? And so I tend to stay away from technology when I talk about strategy. Yep. So just be, so bear so that, with that's me. a good thing, actually. Bear with me, right, because um, my, my kind of core concept um, in coming to Kuwait and with NBK, and when people say to me, so what's your strategy? Mm. You know, what's your technology strategy? The reality is that my strategy is to enable NBK to compete at the highest level on any channel, on any vertical. And if you fo focus in on a business strategy, then the technology becomes much more clear. Yep. Because if you focus on a technology strategy, then you're doing it for technology's sake True. and you're not, you don't have a solution. True. Um, and I've never been a fan of that. So um, enabling NBK to compete at the highest level is very important for me. 
And of course, that then spins off. So how do you do that efficiently, economically, you know, and leverage um, the best tech um, that's available? To do that, you need a problem statement. You know, so what problem are you trying to solve? And I think at NBK, we're really anchored in on serving the customer. Um, and I think, um, as my colleague just mentioned here, I think digital is a very overused term. And I think the, one of the pillars that was discussed here, for me, digital is about simplifying our life and how we work. Um, and anything that can contribute to making that more simple and straightforward, using and leveraging innovation and technology is something that we are very passionate about at NBK. As you probably know, we launched WeEye um, not that long ago as the first digital bank um, in Kuwait with the help of the regulator. Um, and the partnership with CBK, we feel is a very strong enabler into promoting innovation and simplification in technology. Um, if I think about the corporate market, um, we're in the process of completely um, changing our corporate proposition in the sense of the experience. It's very outdated and very popular. We've got some great corporate clients, but the experience isn't, isn't the, where it should be. So we're currently modernizing our corporate online um, and let's call it the mobile or digital channel. Um, so lots of very interesting opportunities, I think, um, within banking um, and having recently um, supported Neom in Saudi with a kind of financial services strategy, um, we came to the conclusion that regulation um, is very much the enabler for technology. It's the enabler for innovation. Um, and in banking, having that relationship and having even co-creating, you know, economic opportunities, I think is something that I'm very keen to progress. Um, another area, just to mention, that I think um, and it's very fascinating because I'm on exactly the same message um, as my friend here. Um, I'm very surprised at the SME market here in, here in Kuwait. And I really feel that it's a massive opportunity um, to be stimulated. You know, FinTech, RegTech, Pharma, all the classic kind of thematics and FDE. There really feels that we're missing, you know, an opportunity at this moment. And I think cloud has been a barrier if I'm being honest, yep. and not being necessarily present. I'm sure you know Google's coming um, uh, um, to the country, which is amazing. But I think in the intervening period, there are opportunities for companies to even create their own on-premise cloud yep. um, to help stimulate um, the SME community. And that's something that we are discussing um, within N NBK in relation to how can we help you know, kickstart that and provide more digital capability and even education um, for the SME market. So, yeah, lots of things to do. So any lighthouse uh, transformation, IT transformations that have been done in NBK that you would, that have really transformed customer experience either on the retail, digital side, that you want to point out? Yeah, I mean, look, um, I mentioned the WeEye, um, which I'm sure most people are aware of in Kuwait. Um, it was the first kind of digital bank um, uh, uh, experiment, if I can use that term. Um, we have 110,000 customers on it. Um, we then revamped the NBK mobile, um, the, the more focused consumer application. Um, it's one of the highest scoring digital apps um, on the stores. Um, and actually in the coming months, oh yeah, it's October, yeah. In the coming months, um, we are, investing and hoping to launch um, quite an innovative um, digital experience for the even younger community okay. um, in the sense of education and financial literacy um, uh, within Kuwait. So, yeah, I mean, we, I, I genuinely feel we're very much at the heart of simplifying banking and the experience for our customers, um, but more to do for sure. Thank you, Mark. Uh, Mohammed Abu Atiyah, coming yeah. to you, you are probably the largest local player in Kuwait in terms of the IT sector, private player. So how do you see this uh, conference, this uh, uh, hype that, are, that, we've, that we've created today in terms of India, Kuwait, <coughs> information technology initiative and partnership? How do you see that? 
Kuwaiti companies and Indian companies working together in this field to help uh, deliver solutions and services to clients to achieve this digital vision 2035. Yeah. Thank you for uh, the questions. It's really impressive uh, uh, to highlight what we are doing as a Kuwaiti-based company, especially in India. Uh, India is an IT-based uh, uh, solutions and services uh, a, a country where these particular services are growing year over year, potentially. And many uh, uh, Indian major IT services providers now increasing as well across and uh, in the region where we have partnered with a lot of this particular uh, uh, vendors in delivering different solutions in different market segments when it comes to cloud adoption, uh, AI, cybersecurity, uh, digital transformation, cybersecurity, uh, etc. Today we are partnering with many major and small niche uh, uh, vendors in India and we are expanding with them here in GCC such as Sictona, Cyber Heels and Smoke uh, Screens and the list keeps uh, uh, growing. Uh, uh, as NDR, 15 years ago when we selected India office since we have established in Hyderabad, we were, the reason behind that we were looking to expand our business across the GCC and we want to have a great extended arm delivering uh, different solutions by having an excellent skill sets and uh, professionals. So India and our header about office was one of the main offices serving uh, the IT solutions uh, for DR. Uh, we rely on this particular office to deliver a complete cloud solutions, lock services, uh, manage services in terms of application development and application monitoring, in addition to many other uh, uh, solutions. Uh, the main idea and how we can uh, uh, help each other, I think we are creating now a blend of technologies and blend of uh, solutions and services capitalizing uh, uh, on India as a solution engine in order to expand more and more across the GCC, especially in Kuwait. So thank you panelists uh, for this discussion and thank you audience for being a patient listener. Uh, when we study, uh, uh, when we study past societies, cultures, etc., technology is an element of culture. So, what we find, as Mark and as Muhammad and most of you mentioned, strategy is paramount. But as Deepesh mentioned, when to strategize, you need to be aware, digitally aware, what is available, what are the tools, yeah. etc., you you need you need to have. And from there, you, uh, from that digitally aware strategy, you are basically a strategy that is aware of the technology options that you have, flows what you're going to do through technology, right? And uh, today, uh, what we call digital is being pushed both by external forces and internal forces. External forces because the people have moved to digital. All the smartphones, etc. that you have, people are very happy doing things on the smartphones, transacting, etc. And so the internal stakeholders should also be able to do that. So clients should also be able to do that. But to be able to do that, there's a whole lot of work that needs to be done. And, but it also provides And uh, so, so basically, this will help. Uh, this is the probably way that we can approach digital transformation. And uh, with NBK, I'd like to understand, uh, do you have a India connection in terms of your banking strategy, uh, your technology strategy, your banking strategy? Well, I mean, as you know, we use TCS today in some okay. of your technologies. Um, <laughs> serving. Was that planned? <laughs> um, I, I think we've got, we've got a range of partner, partnerships mm. with um, different organisations. Um, and I guess, I mean, one of our focuses, candidly, is obviously Kuwaitiisation. Yeah? Um, and it, it's a big part of our business in investing and in growing our own internal talent. 
Um, we've, we've created a tech academy and we're really investing in that. But for sure, the, the newer, the generative AI and some of the newer capabilities in, in particular in things like decentralized finance and blockchain, et cetera, some of these capabilities are obviously not readily available, I think as Mohammed mentioned. And therefore there is, I think, huge opportunity to leverage that experience um, from our Indian cousins, if you like. Um, so I think the, I think the timing is good. Um, I think QA is on the rise in the sense of desiring to be much more innovative and leading in the financial sector. And that should open up lots of opportunity, I think, for the right partnerships with Indian technology capability. Thank you, Mark. On that note, I uh, just uh, would like to reward the audience, whoever answers this quiz question. So obviously the NASCOM delegation is not eligible to provide this answer. So what percentage of global real-time digital payments were done in India last dear, year? Dear audience, just guess the percentage, approximate. So who wanna get and raise his hand so I will take his answer? It, it Just guess any percentage. It would be good to have a Kuwaiti hand. <laughs> so he gave already the hints. What do you think? I want someone to raise his hand, or I will take random. So <coughs> let's check. I want somebody to guess the percentage, any percentage. Just mention any numbers. <coughs> okay. Here, okay. But he already raised there. Let me check him first. Which one, my friend? This gentleman, hello, and please introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Hussein Ghulam from KBCIT. You're most welcome, and thank you so much for joining us. Guess the percentage, approximate between something to something, or just say the right number. The percentage of global real-time digital payment. 40 to 50%. Are you sure? Yes. Congratulations, that's the right answer. You can take also Mr. your name in the left corner there to get, take your prize. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thanks for having us. Thank you, panelists. Thank you, audience, uh, for, for listening uh, to the panelists and hope you would have been, uh, uh, your knowledge on these aspects would have had some increment. And uh, we as the Indian NASCOM delegation, and uh, we want, we are keen to work with our clients in Kuwait, our partners in uh, Kuwait, and to lead this transformation journey. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Dear audience, before we go to the break, now is the time for the raffle draw. حضون الكريم قبل أن نذهب ناو إلى إلى الاستراحة عندنا الحين سحوبات خاصة عندنا جوائز قيمة لكم. جوائز متنوعة مقدمة من رعاتنا اليوم من خلال هذا المؤتمر We have a precious prizes already presented by the sponsors of this conference But before we're gonna talk about the raffle draw I would like to welcome our two distinguished guests today We're gonna present the winner and they were gonna pick the number So please welcome for the raffle draw both of His Excellency the Ambassador of India to the State of Kuwait And also from the IBPC Mr. Gorvinder Singh Please proceed for the raffle draw Welcome. I see too many business cards here. So His Excellency and Mr. Gorvinda were going to pick a business card and he will be the winner for today. What is the color of your business card? <laughs> it's okay. Not too many. So Your Excellency so and Mr. Gorvinda. Just... Uh, tell about the prize. What are the prizes? Yes. Now we're going to go for the third prize and the winner we're going to have is the Invonvo tablet. So let's check. Mr. Gorvinda. I will take your switch. <laughs> so let's check. What do you think? Yeah. Say it in English. Yeah. Mr. Abdul Munim Abdul Salam from Kuwait Airways. From Kuwait Airways. Congratulations. This is for the third prize. He will get, he will get it now or later? Okay. So now just, we, just remain your seat. They will give him the prize now or later. If you want, just take your prize from the left corner, Mr. Abdul Manam. Thank you so much for joining us. Okay, no problem. The prize already ready. Everything for you. Okay, thank you so much. 
So, Mr. Abdul Minim, on behalf of the organizer and also from the sponsors, we'd like to thank you for joining us today. Thank you so much. Please stand up applause for our winner. Thank you so much. And the sponsor from the ABPC. Thank you so much, Mr. Govinda, to be with us now on the stage. And also, we're going to call another person. It will be three of us for the, for the next raffle draw. So please welcome Mr. Haider Ali Qutbuddin for the Burgan Tech. Thank you so much. Please come here. So it will be three people we're going to do for the raffle draw. So now we're going to go for the second prize, and he will be with us now. He will get a pull also. Okay. So, خلاص, you already settled this card, huh? So, let's mention the name. We pulled out one more card. It's uh, Mohanad Al-Halak from Ali Insurance. Thank you so much. Congratulations. I want to say, where is he? Congratulations. Please welcome. Thank you so much for joining us today. Every time you have to pick more of your business cards. Do extra copies. Thank you so much. So I will gonna I will gonna invite now both of our sponsors now to just rest a little bit in the chairs. I will gonna ask about another one. He was well gonna be with us. So please welcome Mr. Santil Kumar from Pio Brevity. Please welcome. Thank you so much. So we'll go now for our first prize, which it will be something else, because you know our we have distinguished prizes today. He already got the pick, already the cards, but let me take his opinion also. So, let's mention the name. Mr. Nabil Kobisi from KDCC. Congratulations, Mr. Nabil. Please proceed to the stage. You are talking to your phone right now. Okay, no problem. He will give both the prizes now today. Thank you so much. Congratulations. Congratulations, my friend. Elf, Elf Mavruk. We'd we'll like to greet all the sponsors for today, for they are already supporting today the conference from the Embassy of India, the organizer. Thank you so much. The quiz prizes. Now is the time for the quiz prizes. So can you give me already the, the, the winners, my dear? I, I will go to it. So I'd like to invite both of our already, our sponsors to just remain to your seats. Now we'll go to the, to the prizes. And also the IBBC chairman, thank you so much for joining us. So I would like to call also no problem. So I'd like to welcome now Mr. Sandeep Shinoy for the award for the quizzes. Please welcome. Please welcome. Congratulations. Please proceed to the stage. He is from the V3 Technology, Mr. Sandeep Shinoy. Please proceed for the award to already give the prizes for the winner from our pop quiz. And the winner we're going to have the HP printer. Please welcome Mr. Mufaddal. Kamal, Mr. Mufaddal, congratulations. You are the one who already, already spoke the answer about the Zoho cooperation. Thank you so much for joining us. Congratulations. Please stand up for applause again for our winner. Congratulations. Now we're going to continue about our already award. Today we're going we're gonna to have too many prizes. So I would like to welcome already Mr. Govarda Singh from the IBBC. He's with us here now. Now we'll have a second prize. He will going to win the Linvonvo tablet. So please welcome Mr. Saad al Ajma and his representative have to take the prize. Congratulations. Congratulations. Please proceed. It's very nice today we see the cooperative and the sponsor today cooperate together for the sake, for the success for this conference. And thank you so much for joining us for this event. And the last and but not least, we'll talk about the first winner. He will going to win also the Levonvo tablet. Please welcome Mr. Hussain. Thank you so much. Congratulations. Ahlan wa fik hayakallah. 
We are very appreciate, and today we are very glad. We see already the sponsors. We'd like to thank all the partnership and even about the support and even the organizer for this account for the success for the event. And now, dear audience, now before that, we have. So now is the time for the, the, to invite the IPPC already members to take a group picture with His Excellency for the conference. Please proceed for the group picture. Welcome. Today, dear audience, today, that's why we are very glad today. I would like to thank everyone who's joining us today for the conference for India Kuwait conference, I4IT, the 2023. Thank you so much. And now it's time for the group picture. And also would like to welcome also the panelists and also the delegation for the group picture also. Would like to thank everyone who today who is joining us today in this conference. Please proceed. Ahlan wa sahlan bikum jamian. Tfadal. We'd like to welcome all the panelists today and also all the delegation that present us to join us for the group picture.